David Fine here from Keys Mods. I just got a knock on the door. I think it was a package that was delivered. My friend Paul from up, I think he's in Minnesota, is sending me some butterflies that he wanted me to have as a gift. So uh, he sent them to me. I believe they're mounted. So the question is, how do you send a mounted butterfly through the mail? I mean, you can put fragile on that box all you want and you never have, know how, how the postal service or the other delivery service is gonna treat your package. But guys, he sent me some really, really cool bugs. So, and I believe they're mounted, they're dry, they're extremely fragile. Guys, let's open up and see. Here it is. The box looks pretty good. Um, there's no dents. So I'm gonna bring it in and we are going to crack this sucker open and we're gonna find out how the butterflies fared on their journey all the way across the country <laughs> from Minnesota to Florida. I think it's Minnesota. Yeah, he's Minnesota. Yeah, it says fragile. I think that's an understatement. If you put fragile on on a a box of dead butterflies that are dried specimens, I think that's an understatement. So let's see. I'm gonna cut this, this tape. And whenever you're handling dried butterflies, guys, you gotta you gotta take some really really good care you can't you can't bounce the thing around too much if you bounce it around too much the antennas and stuff are definitely going to break so we're going to open this up get my flash on here all right now that my flash is on let's see how the butterflies fared on the journey Oh, wait, maybe they're not mounted. Okay, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what's going on here, guys. Just got more tape on. Looks like a pinning box. Oh, whoa. All right. Guys, look at this. These are some really, really cool bugs, guys. All right, obviously your eyes go first to the big regal fertility here. Um, obviously we do not have regal fertilities in Florida. And I've actually only ever collected one of these in my whole life. And Paul knows an area where, in a state where they're, they're not considered endangered and he legally has gotten a few of them and he wanted me to have one because it's just not a bug I'll probably ever collect myself. So to have a voucher specimen of this incredible beauty, it's amazing. And the, you know, it came in perfect. The antenna are still there. The antenna are usually the first things to go. Um, so first of all, you saw how much packaging he put around this. The he put pins on the larger butterflies, the pins next to the abdomen. And the purpose for those is that they hold the, the body in place and they keep it from swinging around. So if the, if the package joshes, the, the most weighty part of the, the heaviest part of the specimen is going to be the body. So the, it'll, the weight will make the pe specimen turn on the pin and it might break the antenna or crush the wings so he's also got these things you know, pretty decently pinned down there all right look at that beauty that's immaculate man Sparia idalia the great spangled fertility what a beauty i'm sorry great spangled regal fertility the females by the way guys are about another third size larger than that now these ones here are, uh, these are olive hair streaks, Grinius, uh, Minotaur, Grinius, Grinius, olive hair streaks, and they get their name 
from the green color on your underside. Let me let me show you what one of the undersides of these look like. Look at that. Let's see. Look at that beauty. Now that is a beautiful specimen. Now Paul, my buddy Paul rears these. So he he's an expert at rearing small butterflies like blues and hair streaks and stuff like that. So he got a female olive hair streak in the wild up there and raised them, reared a bunch of them, got them, got them to lay a bunch of eggs, reared them. And that's, these are what we have. We have reared, immaculate reared specimens. And those are absolutely stunning, stunning specimens. So I'm super thrilled. You gave me two males and two females of the olive hair streak from Minnesota. Look at that. Excellent. All right, we got one more box in here. I'm not sure what's in this. Oh. Oh. Okay. Speria idalias regal frillary. Let's see. The, the data is on the envelope. Oh, he did send me a female. Okay. Female is in paper, though. So I'm going to have to mount this one. There we go. Look at that. Well, she's in the paper. She's dry. Uh, I am going to put her in my relaxing chamber. I call it my relaxing chamber. Okay. There's the big female regal fertility, guys. What a beautiful, beautiful butterfly that is. What a beauty. In fact, that might make a good thumbnail. Always pick up your specimens with tweezers. You don't want your greasy paws to take scales off. And there it is, guys. We're going to mount our regal fertility female. We're going to put her in our rehydration chamber would be the appropriate term for, I call it the relaxing chamber because they need to relax. Um, but we'll let this girl sit in here. We'll give her a cover and probably takes a good 24 hours uh, to get the, the, the moisture will get into the muscles of the butterfly and make them pliable enough to actually put on a spreading board and then we'll, we'll mount her together. But guys, so happy with my gift from Paul, my buddy Paul. Thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate it. Um, now, actually, let's get these guys in a in a box. How about that? Okay, folks, the first step, we're going to get take care of these hair streaks. So we're going over to where my Lysinidae, I have my specimens uh, separated out by family. So these are Lysinidae, and they are in the Coloferous group. And look, I've even got Grinius in here. So I've got Grinius. Uh, I love hair streaks, by the way, if you didn't know. Uh, I've got Grinius olive hair streaks from all over the country, guys. And that's a cool thing is to see, look how different the same species looks as you go to different regions. You know, these are, these are actually from Florida. But as you go west, they look like that. As you go north, they get a little bit more of the golden color. So I'm going to open this sucker up, and we're going to put our uh, specimens in with this group. So uh, just in case you guys did not know, my absolute favorite group of butterflies to, to study are blues and hair streaks. In fact, particularly hair streaks. I absolutely adore hair streaks. Uh, there's so much variability. They're so different and the colors are so amazing. Um, look at these things. These are from Colorado. <laughs> they're, they're in Colorado hair streaks are incredible. So uh, this is my olive hair streak little group right here. And I am gonna go ahead and I am going to add my new olive hair streak uh, specimens to the collection, right? And we've got the two females here. We've 
let's see, make sure they're straight. And then we've got the males. And one day I'm gonna spread these out a little bit, probably need to split this drawer soon. But I don't do a whole lot of collecting, guys, so it's it's been a while since I've added to this drawer. All right, some of you might be saying, how on earth do you tell the difference between the males and the females? Uh, well, male hair streaks have an endroconial tuft. So there's a little cell in the forewing, you can see it. It's like a bright little cell. And I'm gonna see if I can zoom into it for you. The cell there on the forewing is actually an endroconial tuft. And that is what the males use to uh, both release and sense chemical pheromones from the females. Females lack that endroconial tuft, guys. So that's the main way you tell them apart. Uh, and then obviously it's very difficult to tell them apart when they're flying around because they don't sit there with their wings open like this. So uh, yeah, there's my hair streaks, guys. And now um, it, I'm just gonna put, put the glass back over this box. And uh, let's see. I'm going to put the glass back over this box. Okay. I'm going to put her back in here. All right. There's my. Hair streaks are away and properly categorized. All right, now I'm going to go over here and look for the spay area. I wonder if some of the spay area. Nope, not that one. It might actually be in this drawer. Let's see. Spay area down the bottom. Okay, guys. Idalia right here. So I have, uh, I have them under heliconium. Spa I believe it or not, spayaria are actually pretty closely related to long wings uh, in the, the whole family tree thing. And so I'm going to open up this box here, and there may not be some room. I actually have some medallia. Ugh. Let's see. Well, those are some spayaria. There's no room in here, guys. So I'm going to put, let me see if there's any room in that box. Nope. Okay, for now, I'm just going to put them in this box here because there's no more room in the end. <laughs> so this is not the proper box, but just because I have uh, a little bit of a space problem, I'm going to go ahead and put this Regal Fertility here in a box of its close relatives. These are some other fertilities, um, but you can see why it would call it, it would be called the Regal Fertility. I mean, the thing's gorgeous and it's very large. And so, um, yeah, that's it, guys. Um, thanks for watching. We'll get back to you on mounting the female Regal Fertility once she's hydrated. We'll do that together, make that a whole video. Guys, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll talk soon and uh, let's get out there and enjoy some bugs. Thanks to my buddy Paul for sending me some amazing butterflies. Take care, guys. Bye.